First of all, I welcome you all to my third video on the chapter Biomolecules. In previous video, we started the discussion on proteins, wherein we discussed uh, alpha amino acids, different types of amino acids, that is classification of amino acids and of course, uh, the structure of amino acids we discussed. Now at this moment, in the today's video, we will take up the next discussion under proteins, it will be structure of proteins. As far as uh, proteins are concerned, proteins are, they are the polymers of uh, alpha amino acids. That means uh, when proteins undergo complete hydrolysis, that results in the formation of large number of alpha amino acids. It means proteins are formed by the combination of uh, large number of alpha amino acids. In proteins, these alpha amino acids are connected to each other through uh, amide linkage. In proteins, these alpha amino acids are connected to each other through amide linkages, CONH linkage, and that amide linkage is called, yes, it is uh, a peptide linkage. That amide linkage is called peptide linkage. As far as this amide linkage is concerned, this amide linkage is formed by the combination of, uh, yes, it is two or more same or different alpha amino acids. This particular amide linkage is formed when carboxyl group of one amino acid is condensed with amino group of another amino acid. So, for example, if I say, look at this, uh, this is uh, one amino acid that is NH2CHR1 and of course, uh, C double bond O, OH. this is one amino acid, general representation of one amino acid, alpha amino acid, or the, just observe, here we have a carboxyl group and here it is a amino group, because amino acids are made up of carboxyl group as well as amino group. Carboxyl group of one amino acid is condensed with, yes it is, uh, amino group of uh, another amino acid, look at this. This is uh, one more amino acid, right? This is one more amino acid. When two same or different alpha amino acids undergo condensation, during condensation, look here, carboxyl group of one amino acid is condensed with amino group of uh, another amino acid that results in the formation of yes, it is that results in the formation of a product that is. Uh, by the loss of, yes it is, water molecule, reaction involves removal of water molecule that results in the formation of a product, look at this, uh, this product contains, yes it is, uh, the amide linkage, that is, C double bond O is attached to, yes it is, NH, or the, NH is attached to, yes it is, uh, CH, uh, and of course, uh, R to the, then it is, what we call it as, uh, C double bond O OH. This is the product that is obtained when carboxyl group of one amino acid is condensed with amino group of another alpha amino acid. Look at this. Uh, that results in the formation of yes, it is uh, one amide linkage. This is what we call it as amide linkage. This amide linkage between alpha amino acids in proteins is called yes, it is uh, peptide linkage. This particular amide linkage formed between two alpha amino acids or the in proteins that is what we call it as peptide linkage and uh, the product formed is called as peptide whatever the product that we got here you know this is what we call it as peptide <coughs> the product formed when two or more same or different alpha amino acids undergo condensation and that is called as peptide that is called as peptide or the and of course uh, if this peptide is formed by the combination of two alpha amino acids, then it will be called as dipeptide. If this peptide is formed by the combination of three same or different alpha amino acids, then it will be called as 
tripeptide. In the same manner, when large number of alpha amino acids undergo condensation, okay, that results in the formation of one product which is called as polypeptide. As far as proteins are concerned, proteins are polypeptides of alpha amino acids. They are formed by the condensation of large number of alpha amino acids and the product is called as polypeptide. Just observe. As far as the peptide that we have written in this particular uh, discussion, you know, this is a dipeptide. This is what we call it as, this is dipeptide because this peptide is formed by the combination of two alpha amino acids. And this peptide is characterized by, yes, it is one peptide linkage. Now then, just imagine, if this peptide is formed by the combination of three alpha amino acids, that results in the formation of a tripeptide that contains two peptide linkages. Let me show that also, right? Here it is. Here I have shown, yes, it is, uh, I have taken two alpha amino acids. Let me take up one more there. Yes, it is, uh, this is NH2 and of course, uh, this is CHR3 there and of course, C double bond OH. This is one more alpha amino acid. Oh, that figure condensation takes place between carboxyl group of uh, one amino acid and of course, uh, amino group of another amino acid. Oh, then, yes. So, that results in the formation of a product that is called as tripeptide because that product is formed by the condensation of three alpha amino acids. Let me write that. Yes, it is. This is what we call it as NH2 and of course CHR1 and of course C double bond O NH. How the C double bond O NH and of course this is CH and it is R2 there. Yes. Then it is C double bond O and of course this is NH. Then it is CH and of course it is R3 there. And just observe this is what we call it as. Yes, it is tripeptide. This tripeptide is formed by the combination of three alpha amino acids and it contains, yes, it is uh, only two, yes, it is uh, peptide linkages. It will be characterized by two peptide linkages. Like that, you know, a tetrapeptide is formed by the combination of four alpha amino acids that contains three peptide linkages. A pentapeptide is formed by the combination of five alpha amino acids that contains four peptide linkages. Like that, Hexapeptide is formed by the combination of six alpha amino acids that contains five peptide linkages. Because of that, you know, if a polypeptide is formed by the combination of n number of alpha amino acids, if a polypeptide is formed by the combination of n number of alpha amino acids that contains n minus one, yes, it is peptide linkages. If the polypeptide is formed by the combination of 50, yes, it is alpha amino acids, then Yes, it is. Uh, it contains 49. Yes, it is peptide linkages. So, like that, you know, a polypeptide is produced by the combination of n number of, uh, yes, it is alpha amino acids, which is having n minus 1. Yes, it is uh, peptide linkages. No doubt, uh, a hexapeptide contains, yes, hexapeptide is formed by the combination of 6 alpha amino acids. A heptapeptide is formed by the combination of 7 alpha, uh, 7 alpha amino acids. If the peptide is formed by the combination of more than 10 alpha amino acids and then that peptide is called as polypeptide. Okay, na? And of course, uh, proteins are polypeptides, of course. Proteins are polypeptides. Just observe. Here I have shown, yes, it is combination of, yes, it is three alpha amino acids. Okay? Again, you know, if you increase the number of alpha amino acids, you know that uh, the length of the peptide chain increases as the number of alpha amino acids in the Yes, it is given protein molecule increases, length of the polypeptide chain increases. Okay. And of course, uh, whatever may be the length of the polypeptide chain for that matter, every polypeptide chain contains, yes, it is uh, one free, yes, it is carboxyl group, and one free, yes, it is amino group. You know, three alpha amino acids in the use okay. Any number of alpha amino acids may undergo combination. Finally, you are going to get a product that contains free carboxyl group and yes it is free amino groups at the terminal carbon atoms of the yes it is polypeptide chain you know yes two amino acids are combined body when again you want the peptide chain but at the all peptide chain only on the end only on the free carboxyl group it's the in on the end only on the free amino group it's the other and of course uh, uh, this particular carbon atom yes 
this particular carbon atom terminal carbon atom containing free carboxyl group is called yes it is c terminal of yes it is peptide chain look at this this particular terminal carbon atom that contains free amino group is called as yes it is n terminal yes it is it is called as n terminal of the peptide chain other a polypeptide chain is characterized by c terminal and n terminal n terminal is a, a carbon atom that contains free amino group c terminal is a carbon atom terminal carbon atom that contains free cooh that like that you know a peptide chain is characterized by c terminal and n terminal you just keep that particular aspect in your mind because i will make use of that particular that particular aspect in order to name yes it is peptides okay now so this is what we call it as yes it is uh, the peptides and of course polypeptides as i said uh, <clears throat> and if the peptide is formed by the combination of more than 10 alpha amino acids and that peptide is called as polypeptide and generally a polypeptide containing more than 100 alpha amino acids having a molecular mass more than 10,000 is called protein that is all polypeptides are not considered to be proteins but a polypeptide having more than 100 alpha amino acids with a molecular mass of greater than 10,000 is called what we call it as protein or the all polypeptide chains are proteins in the karyodila if you want to call any polypeptide as a protein it must be formed by combination of more than 100 alpha amino acids at the same time that polypeptide should have a molecular mass greater than 10,000 then only that polypeptide is called as yes it is proteins but at the same time there are some exceptions for that particular observation because you know there are some yes it is proteins there are some proteins which contain less than 100 alpha amino acids but still those polypeptide chains are called as proteins because you know these polypeptide chains with less than 100 alpha amino acids will have well-defined conformations of proteins these polypeptide these polypeptide chains with less than 100 alpha amino acids will have well-defined conformations of proteins because of that those uh, polypeptide chains are also called as yes it is uh, proteins example for that is insulin insulin is yes it is uh, characterized by only 51 alpha amino acids insulin is characterized by only 51 alpha amino acids but still it is called as protein because it, uh, it is characterized by well-defined yes it is conformations of proteins because of that a polypeptide insulin with 51 alpha amino acids is also called yes it is protein there yes so this is what we call it as a uh, peptides peptide linkages dipeptides tripeptides polypeptides and of course uh, meaning of proteins yeah. now at this moment we'll take up next discussion it will be what we call it as uh, nomenclature of yes it is peptides now let us see nomenclature of peptides right now let us see nomenclature of peptides for that purpose you know i'll take up one example that is a dipeptide produced by yes it is a combination of yes it is lysine this is lysine and of course yes it is alanine right this is what we call it as yes it is uh, this is glycine and it will be alanine right this will be alanine look at this uh, during the formation of yes it is uh, dipeptide that is carboxyl group of uh, glycine will be condensed with amino group of yes it is uh, alanine that leads to what we call it as uh, NH2 and of course CH2 and of course C double bond O NH and of course uh, CH CSP and of course uh, C double bond O S O H yes this is what we call it as a dipeptide how to name this particular dipeptide that's a question while naming uh, dipeptides or peptides you know the base name of the peptide is taken from the name of the amino acid at the C terminal the base name of the peptide will be taken from the name of the amino acid at C terminal look at this in this particular peptide the amino acid at the C terminal is yes it is alanine or the, this is the amino acid at the C this is C terminal or the, this is C terminal and it will be yes it is N terminal or the, what I said while naming peptides you know the base name is taken from 
the name of the amino acid at C terminal of the peptide. Remaining amino acids, amino acids will be treated as substituents. Names of the substituents will end with YL. That is, here it is. In this particular case, it is dipeptide. Glycine is a substituent. And of course, the name alanine is a base name. And of course, names of the substituents is obtained by replacing INE, yes, it is INE of the glycine by, yes, it is YL. Because of that, you know, the name of this particular, yes, it is dipeptide is, this is glycyl. This is glycyl. And of course, uh, alanine. Glycyl alanine. Alanine is a base name because in the C terminal we have a amino acid alanine. Now that, that's why you know base name of this particular dipeptide is taken from name of the yes it is alanine. Glycine is a substituent and its name ends with YL. That's why it is yes it is glycyl alanine and it is symbolically represented as yes it is GLY yes it is ala. That is this is what we call it as. Glycyl alanine. Agwada If uh, the condensation takes place like this, just observe. If uh, carboxyl group of uh, yes, it is uh, alanine. This is carboxyl group of alanine. Is condensed with if carboxyl group of alanine is condensed with uh, amino group of glycine. You know, if the glycine is tola, you can mark the I'll take yes, it is alanine. This is glycine. How oh, You know, condensation takes place like this. That results in the formation of yes, it is NH2 and of course CH and of course CS3 and of course C double bond O NH and of course CS2 CS3. How oh, And CS and of course CS2 and of course uh, NH CS2 and of course uh, C double bond O OH. OH. How oh, this is a dipeptide. In this particular dipeptide, as C terminal, at C terminal we have a glycine. At N terminal we have a yes, it is alanine. How the base name is obtained from yes, it is name of the amino acid at C terminal. How the therefore base base name of this particular peptide is glycine. Substituent is alanine. That's why it is named as yes, it is alanyl. Yes, it is glycine. It is named as alanyl glycine. C terminally, C terminally, Yava Amani acid in the North Compete in Marbeco, names and a Marbeco. Other base name of the peptide is obtained from the name of the amino acid at, yes, it is uh, the C terminal. Other remaining will be treated as substituent and their names end with, yes, it is YL. Just imagine if uh, a peptide is formed by the combination of three alpha amino acids. No, yeah, I'll go to. This is glycine, this is alanine. Let me, yes, it is combine this with one more. Yes, it is, uh, yes, it is alpha amino acid. And this is what we call it as a serine alvaita. This is what we call it serine. CS2H serine alvaita, the serine. Illi, on the peptide linkage baratta. Illi, what on the peptide linkage baratta. Then, we are going to get a product, yes. And the product is of this type, that is NH2, CS2. C double bond O NH yes then it is CH CS3 how the and of course C double bond O and of course NH yes it is CH CS2 OH and of course C double bond O OH how the in this particular tripeptide this is a tripeptide how the it contains two peptide linkages how the in this particular tripeptide C terminal contains serine. Therefore, base name of this tripeptide is obtained from the name serine. Remaining will be treated as substituent. Therefore, it is, uh, yes, it is uh, glycyl alanyl, glycyl alanyl, and of course, serine. Glycyl alanyl, yes, it is serine. Like that, you know, you can name the, yes, it is peptides. So, this is something about uh, nomenclature of peptides. Okay, now. So at this moment, we will take up next discussion and very important discussion for the examination point of view that will be, yes it is, classification of proteins. We will see that, yes. Now let us see classification of proteins.
as per your NCRT textbook, we are supposed to study classification of proteins based on molecular shapes. Classification of proteins based on molecular shapes. And to that, you know, we have uh, two types of SHS proteins. It will be fibrous proteins and uh, globular proteins. We have two types of proteins based on, yes, it is molecular shapes, fibrous proteins, and of course, uh, yes, it is globular proteins. As far as uh, fibrous proteins are concerned, you know that uh, proteins will be generally characterized by polypeptide chains. As far as fibrous, fibrous proteins are concerned, the proteins which consist of uh, linear thread-like polypeptide chains which are arranged to form, yes, it is fibrous, just observe here. In the case of uh, fibrous proteins, these polypeptide chains, you know, they run parallel, they run parallel to, yes, it is, uh, to form, yes, it is fibers that, look at this. The polypeptide chains are running in parallel and are held together by yes, it is hydrogen bonds and yes, it is disulfide linkages. They are held together by hydrogen bonds and yes, it is disulfide linkages. And of course, uh, this is what we call it as uh, the yes, it is fibrous proteins. So that that is uh, the proteins which consists of linear thread-like polypeptide chains which are arranged to form yes, it is fibers. And uh, these fibrous proteins are generally Insoluble in water. Yes, it is. Uh, these fibrous proteins are insoluble in water. And uh, in the case of fibrous proteins, you know, linear thread like polypeptide chains, you know, they run parallel and are held together by, yes, it is hydrogen bond sign and, of course, uh, disulfide linkages to form a fiber like structures. Because of that fiber like structures, you know, that these fibrous proteins are insoluble in water. Example for the fibrous proteins will be, yes, it is. Uh, Keratin, yes, it is one of the proteins found in hair and nails, or you can say myosin is one more fibrous protein found in muscles. Keratin and myosin, they are the examples for fibrous proteins. Okay, now, so this is what we call it as fibrous proteins. As far as uh, one more type is concerned, that is uh, globular proteins, are there. that is, uh, second type is what we call it as uh, globular proteins. As far as globular proteins are concerned, these are the proteins uh, which consist of, yes it is, uh, long polypeptide chains which will be folded in such a way so as to give spherical shape to the protein molecule. In this particular, yes it is, uh, yes it is, uh, the globular proteins, you know, polypeptide chains will be folded in such a way so as to give, yes it is, Spherical shape to the yes, it is protein molecule. This is what we call it as yes, it is uh, the globular proteins. Generally, globular proteins are characterized by spherical shape. Now, then, during the folding of this polypeptide chain, non polar parts will be projected inside, non polar parts will be pushed inside during folding and twisting of this long chain polypeptide chains. You know, non polar groups will be yes, it is pushed inside, whereas Polar groups will be pushed outside. These are the polar groups. Polar groups will be projected outside. If the polypeptide chains of folding up because in the non-polar groups are now, they are pushed inside, whereas polar groups will be pushed outside. Because you know, you cannot expect, you cannot keep polar groups together because they undergo repulsion. That's why you know, non-polar groups will be pushed inside, polar groups will be pushed outside. Because of that, you know. These polar groups at the surface of spherical shape, they strongly interact with polar water molecules. So that these polar groups at the surface of, uh, yes it is a spherical molecule, you know, these polar groups at the surface of protein molecule, you know, they strongly interact with polar water molecules, thereby globular proteins are soluble in water. Thereby globular proteins are, yes it is soluble in water, whereas fibrous proteins are insoluble in water. And as far as examples for the globular proteins are concerned, all enzymes are considered as, yes it is, uh, yes it is globular proteins or you can say the albumins like you know that is egg albumin, one of the proteins you know, egg albumin is also an example for, yes it is globular protein or you can say insulin is also an example for, yes it is uh, globular protein, like that you know as far as Globular proteins are concerned. These are the proteins which consist of a polypeptide, polypeptide chains which will be folded in such a way 
so as to give spherical shape to the protein molecule okay now these globular proteins are soluble in water and of course examples will be enzymes and of course egg albumin and of course insulin they are the examples for globular proteins so this is what we call it as classification of proteins now let us see next and the important discussion as far as your ncrt textbook is concerned that is different levels of protein structure okay now we'll see that different levels of protein structures okay now let us see as per your ncrt textbook we are supposed to study different levels of protein structure and the protein structure can be studied under four different levels one is what we call it as uh, primary structure of protein this is uh, one level second is uh, secondary structure of protein right this is one more level and it is tertiary structure of protein right this is uh, one more level and of course uh, quaternary structure of rice it is a uh, uh, protein that is protein structure can be studied under four different levels primary structure of proteins secondary structure of proteins tertiary structure of proteins and quaternary structure of proteins let us see one by one as far as uh, the primary structure of protein is concerned look at this this is uh, primary structure of protein primary structure of protein refers to the sequence of uh, alpha amino acids which are held together by peptide linkages primary primary structure of proteins refers to the sequence of alpha amino acids held together by peptide linkages and that is what we call it as primary structure you know that uh, proteins may contain more than one different yes it is polypeptide chains and of course uh, each polypeptide chain has got uh, a specific sequence of alpha amino acids or the if any change in primary structure of protein results in change in the sequence of alpha amino acids thereby that results in the formation of a different protein molecule is it not primary structure of protein refers to the sequence of sequence of alpha amino acids and are held together by yes it is peptide linkages how tane a proteins may contain more than one different polypeptide chains each polypeptide chain has got its own yes it is specific sequence of alpha alpha amino acids in order to perform a particular biological function if any change in primary primary structures results in change in the sequence of alpha amino acids in a polypeptide chain thereby that results in the formation of a different protein there like you know so this is what we call it as primary structure like the primary structure only you have yes it is uh, peptide linkages as uh, yes, it is peptide linkages as binding forces and as far as secondary structure is concerned as far as uh, secondary structure of yes it is proteins are concerned as far as uh, the secondary structure of proteins is concerned secondary structure of proteins refers to the the shape in which long chain polypeptide chains can exist in its molecule and that is what we call it as yes it is secondary structure the shape in which long chain polypeptide chains can exist so that is what we call it as the secondary structure there are two types of secondary structures possible for the proteins one it is uh, yes it is uh, alpha helix structure and the second one is uh, yes it is beta pleated sheet structure this is uh, these are the two types of yes it is secondary structures that you are supposed to study as far as your ncrt textbook is concerned that is these two secondary structures are due to the regular folding of backbone of the polypeptide chain because of the hydrogen bonding between co group and nh group of the peptide chains now the that is these two secondary structures are because of the regular folding of backbone of the polypeptide chains due to the hydrogen bonding between co and nh groups of the peptide bonds in polypeptide chain so that is what we call it as uh, yes it is uh, that is secondary structure now let us see the detailed aspect of alpha helix structure and, and of course beta pleated structure in brief what i can conclude at this moment this particular alpha helix structure is possible if r groups andre r groups maybe alkyl group maybe phenyl group maybe hydrogen r groups attached to the polypeptide chains are large if r groups attached to the polypeptide chains are large if they are very big if they are large in size then alpha helix structure is possible if r groups attached to the polypeptide chains are small in size if r groups attached to the polypeptide chains are small in size then beta pleated structure is possible at the same time this particular alpha helix structure is because of the intra molecular hydrogen bonding whereas 
beta pleated sheet structure is because of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding. I'm going to explain detailed aspect of these two structures by writing the shape of ACTs, these two structures. Okay, now let me write the shapes of alphalic structure and, and of course beta pleated sheet beta pleated sheet structure then we'll go for the details of it okay now we'll see that yes now let us see one of the secondary structures that is alphalic structures is it not we have two types of uh, secondary structures for proteins alphalic structure and beta pleated sheet structures okay as far as secondary structure is concerned that's because of the hydrogen bonding between between co group and nh group of the series peptide bonds present in polypeptide chain and of course due to hydrogen bonding what happens you know the backbone of the polypeptide chains undergo coiling and that results in the formation of ACT's secondary structures. One of the secondary structures is what we call it as alphalic structures. This alphalic structure is possible if uh, R groups attached to the polypeptide chains are large in size. If R groups attached to the polypeptide chains are uh, large in size, you know, what happens, you know, intramolecular hydrogen bonding intramolecular hydrogen bonding takes place between C double bond O group of uh, 1 amino acid and uh, NH group of 4th uh, amino acid in a polypeptide chain 4th amino acid in a polypeptide chain due to the intramolecular hydrogen bonding between CO group of 1 amino acid and NH group of 4th amino acid because of that you know that is the backbone of the polypeptide chain coils up to form pyrrole structure known as right-handed alphalic structure. Look here, here it is, uh, yes it is, the backbone of the polypeptide chain, yes it is, or the backbone of the polypeptide chain. Just observe, CO group of, uh, yes it is, uh, the one amino acid forms hydrogen bonding with NH group of the fourth amino acid within the polypeptide chain within the polypeptide chain. Look here, the CO group of uh, one amino acid will form hydrogen bonding with NH bond of the another amino acid to form intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Because of these intramolecular hydrogen bonds, what happens, you know, the coiling of uh, backbone of the polypeptide chain takes place. That results in, yes, it is, uh, that is spiral structure to the polypeptide chain. And uh, this spiral structure is known as, yes, it is right-handed alphalic structure. Because of that, uh, spiral structure to the alphalic structure that is protein molecule undergoes stretching there this kind of alphalic structure is found in proteins of the hairs because of that you know hairs are little bit stretchable then because of that because of the alphalic structure in proteins of the hairs hairs are little bit stretchable so this is what we call it as alphalic structure and of course this alphalic structure is also known as 3.613 helix this alpha structure is also known as 3.613 helix and together because uh, the meaning of this symbol is this alpha structure contain approximately 3.6 alpha amino acids in a yes it is uh, a cyclic ring of uh, 13 atoms in a cyclic ring of 13 atoms in alpha structure so that is what we call it as alpha structure found in the proteins of the hairs so that is what we call it as alpha structure now let us see beta pleated sheet structure. Agbadala, we'll see that. Yes. Now let us see one more kind of secondary structure that is beta pleated sheet structure. As I said, this particular beta pleated sheet structure is possible if R groups attached to the polypeptide chains are small in size. If R groups attached to the polypeptide chains are small in size, then beta pleated sheet, beta -pleated sheet structure is possible. This particular beta pleated sheet structure is due to the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between intermolecular hydrogen bonding between NH group of uh, one polypeptide chain with CO group of another polypeptide chain look here this is one polypeptide chain and this is another polypeptide chain they are lying side by side and these polypeptide chains are held together by yes it is intermolecular hydrogen bonding therefore if all groups are small in size then a polypeptide chains lie side by side in zigzag manner with uh, alternate R groups with alternate with alternate R groups okay now on the same side with alternate R groups on the same side situated at a fixed distance apart so that is that leads to yes it is beta pleated sheet structure just observe 
that is uh, the polypeptide chains will be lying side by side like this side by side like this that results in what we call it as a sheet like structure that is that results in sheet like structure that is what we call it as as it is beta plated sheet structure that is in beta plated structure you know when all groups are small in size that is uh, two or more polypeptide chain lie side by side in zigzag fashion with alternate all groups with alternate all groups okay now on the same side look here your all groups they are on the same side okay your all groups are on the same side at alternate positions out there and situated at a yes it is fixed distance apart that results in yes it is beta plated sheet structure and of course as i said in this particular beta plated sheet structure you know that is polypeptide chains are held together by intermolecular adhesion bonding between co group of one polypeptide chain with nh group of another polypeptide chain out there look and of course this kind of beta plated sheet structure is found in silk protein this type of beta plated sheet structure is found in yes it is uh, silk protein and as far as proteins are concerned proteins may not have say, same kind of uh, yes it is secondary structure throughout the length of the protein proteins may not have same kind of secondary structure throughout the length of the protein some part of the protein may have alphalic structure some part of the protein may have yes it is beta plated sheet structure so this is what we call it as secondary structure of protein agudala now at this moment we'll go for the remaining two levels of yes it is protein structure it will be yes it is tertiary structure of proteins and quaternary structure of proteins we'll see that yes now let us see that is uh, one more level that is tertiary structure of yes it is uh, proteins it will be tertiary structure of yes it is proteins as far as uh, tertiary structure is concerned tertiary structure of proteins refers to the overall folding of polypeptide chain to give definite molecular shape to the protein tertiary structure of proteins refers to the overall folding of uh, yes it is polypeptide chain to give definite molecular shape to the protein molecule and that is what we call it as tertiary structure and this particular st tertiary structure leads to two types of molecular shapes one it will be fibrous shape one particular molecular shape is fibrous shape and second it will be yes it is globular shapes these are the two possible molecular shapes given to the proteins due to the tertiary structure of protein okay now as far as secondary and tertiary structures are concerned these secondary and tertiary structures of proteins are stabilized by that is some type of forces known as hydrogen bonding disulfide linkages van der waals force of attractions and electrostatic force of attractions these are the four types of force of attractions which will be responsible for the stabilization of secondary and tertiary structure now at this moment we'll go for we'll go to the one more level yes it is of a protein structure that is quaternary structure of proteins quaternary structure of proteins and as far as uh, quaternary structure is concerned you know some proteins may have more than one different polypeptide chains these these polypeptide chains these different polypeptide chains present in proteins are known as subunits and this particular quaternary structure refers to the spatial arrangement of these subunits with respect to each other proteins may have more than one different types of polypeptide chains these polyp different polypeptide chains present in proteins are called subunits the spatial arrangement of these subunits with respect to each other is known as as it is quaternary structure of proteins agudala and of course that is what we call it as the different levels of protein structure different levels of protein structure agudala now at this moment you know i am going to represent uh, primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structures of proteins through diagrams that is diagrammatic representation of primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structures of proteins we'll see that look here just to make you to understand the different levels of protein structures i make use of this diagrams okay na look at this this is uh, primary structure of protein that is sequence of uh, yes it is amino acids which will be linked through peptide linkages this primary structure is characterized by yes it is uh, peptide linkages so this is uh, primary structure in secondary structure you know due to the hydrogen bonding among the due to the hydrogen bonding between co group and nh groups of the peptide bonds that is there is a coiling of yes it is a polypeptide chain takes place, takes place this is secondary structure yes this this is because of yes it is uh, 
hydrogen bonds. This secondary structure is because of yes, it is hydrogen bonds. Now the just make out the difference between yes, it is uh, primary structure and secondary structure. Now the it is here it involves only peptide linkages here peptide linkages as well as yes, it is hydrogen bonds here. This particular secondary structure undergoes further folding, and that results in what we call it as uh, yes, it is. Uh, Tertiary structure. This is a tertiary structure of protein. There, yes. A further folding of secondary structure. You know that uh, as far as tertiary structure of protein is concerned, it is a overall folding of uh, yes, it is a polypeptide chain to form to give definite molecular shape for the protein. That is what we call tertiary structure. Here it involves hydrogen bonds, disulfide linkages, van der Waals force of attraction, and of course. Uh, Electrostatic force of attractions in addition to peptide linkages here. And of course, uh, look here in the case of a quaternary structure, you know, the subunits in yes, it is uh, the subunits present in yes, it is protein structure, the subunits, under, the subunits present in yes, it is uh, the protein structure, they are arranged in space in a particular manner. That is, spatial arrangement of the subunits present in, spatial arrangement of the different subunits present in. Proteins that is what we call it as uh, yes, it is uh, the quaternary structure. This is one subunit. Look at this. This is uh, one more subunit. Yes, this is uh, one more subunit. Yes, uh, and this is one more subunit like this. You know, these subunits undergo yes, it is uh, the arranged in space in a definite manner that results in what we call it as uh, quaternary structure. Uh, so, this is what we call it as uh, that is. Uh, Diagrammatic representation of yes, it is different levels of protein structure. Now, at this moment, we'll take up next discussion. It is uh, yes, it is uh, what we call it as uh, denaturation of proteins. You can expect this particular discussion in the examination. Yes, so what is denaturation of proteins? Give examples on the right? Let us see that. What is this uh, denaturation of proteins? Denaturation of proteins is uh, a process in which Protein loses its biological activity. Denaturation is a process in which protein loses protein loses its biological activity when it is subjected to change in temperature and change in pH value, and that process is called yes, it is denaturation of proteins. As far as denaturation of proteins is concerned, it is a process in which protein loses its biological activity, or you can say protein loses its biological property when it is subjected to change in temperature and change in pH. And that process is called what we call it as uh, denaturation of proteins. During denaturation of proteins, what happens? You know, secondary and tertiary structure of proteins will be destroyed during denaturation. Secondary and tertiary structures of proteins will be destroyed, whereas uh, primary structure of proteins will be retained. Or you can see during denaturation, secondary and tertiary structures of proteins will be destroyed, whereas primary structure of proteins will be intact. That is, there will be no damage to the primary structure of yes it is proteins that is there will be no change in yes it is sequence of alpha amino acids present in yes it is protein molecules so this is what we call it as yes it is denaturation of proteins as far as denaturation of proteins is concerned we have some examples like you know that is uh, the coagulation of egg white upon boiling coagulation of egg white upon boiling is an example for yes it is denaturation of proteins at the same time Coddling of milk is also an example for yes, it is denaturation of proteins. That is, conversion of milk into curd is an example for yes, it is denaturation of proteins. So, this is what we call it as denaturation of proteins that completes the discussion proteins. Agbadala. And as far as uh, the denaturation of proteins is, con uh, is concerned, what I said uh, during denaturation, proteins are going to lose yes, it is biological properties. The loss of uh, biological property of proteins is because of the destruction of uh, secondary and tertiary structures of proteins. As you know that uh, during denaturation, primary structure of proteins will be retained because of that, you know, proteins are going to retain chemical properties. Chemical properties of proteins will not be changed during denaturation, whereas biological properties will be lost. That is, the loss of, uh, yes, it is biological properties of proteins is because of Destruction of yes, it is touch secondary and tertiary structures of proteins. So, this is something about yes, it is denaturation of proteins. Now, at this moment, we'll take up next discussion. It is what we call it as nucleic acids. 
the last discussion of the chapter biomolecules and for the last we'll see nucleic acids right now let us see the discussion nucleic acids under the chapter biomolecules and of course uh, you are very much fam familiar with the term heredity you studied that heredity the concept of heredity in biology in detail you know that heredity refers to the transmission of uh, characters from one generation to the another generation that is transmission of uh, inherent characters from one generation to the another generation that is what we call it as heredity and that heredity the phenomenon heredity is mainly because of uh, some type of particles present in nucleus of the yes it is cell a nucleus of the cell is characterized by certain particles known as chromosomes nucleus of the cell is characterized by certain particles called yes it is chromosomes these chromosomes are responsible for yes it is uh, the heredity there is it not as far as chromosomes are concerned as far as chromosomes are concerned these chromosomes are characterized by yes it is they consist of yes it is uh, proteins and of course uh, one type of special compounds known as yes it is uh, nucleic acids chromosomes are characterized by yes it is proteins and nucleic acids these chromosomes are responsible for what we call it as heredity the, the transmission of inherent characters from generation to generation and of course as far as our discussion is concerned we are interested in what we call it as nucleic acids okay na we are interested in nucleic acids as far as uh, nucleic acids are concerned chemically nucleic acids are considered as yes it is uh, polynucleotides chemically yes it is uh, nucleic acids of uh, biomolecules they are considered as yes it is polynucleotides that means these nucleic acids are produced by the repeated combination of yes it is the class of compounds called yes it is nucleotides nucleotides are repeating units nucleotides are the repeating structural units present in yes it is uh, nucleic acids these nucleotides are made up of these nucleotides are made up of three important components that is pentose sugar one it will be pentose sugar the second one is uh, heterocyclic heterocyclic nitrogenous base that is one more component that is present in nucleotide will be heterocyclic nitrogenous base third component is what we call it as uh, phosphoric acid unit third component is phosphoric acid unit these are the three important components present in nucleotides therefore nucleotides are uh, repeating structural units present in nucleic acids which will be made up of pentose sugar heterocyclic nitrogenous base and yes it is phosphoric acid now at this moment you know we are going to we are going to start the discussion nucleic acids with the composition of nucleic acids now let us see the composition of nucleic acids as i said uh, nucleic acids are formed by repeated combination of nucleotides therefore when nucleic acids undergo complete hydrolysis when nucleic acids undergo complete hydrolysis and which results in the formation of yes it is uh, yes it is uh, what we call it as pentose sugar yes this results in the formation of pentose sugar heterocyclic nitrogenous base and of course uh, phosphoric acid unit and there are two types of yes it is nucleic acids that we come across there are two types of nucleic acids present in nucleus of the cell one it will be yes it is uh, what we call it as deoxy ribo nucleic acid one nucleic acid is deoxy ribo nucleic acid it is abbreviated as yes it is dna there it is abbreviated as dna second nucleic acid is what we call it as ribo yes it is nucleic acid second nucleic acid is ribo nucleic acid and it is abbreviated as what we call it as rna this is what we call it as ribo nucleic acid these are the two types of nucleic acids that that we come across in the yes it is nucleus of the cell and of course as far as pentose sugar is concerned there are two types of uh, pentose sugar units which will be involved in the formation of nucleic acids for example one it is what we call it as yes it is here this is uh, one pentose sugar right 
just observe here. This is one pentose sugar. This is what we call it as beta D ribose. We call it as its name is beta D ribose. But here, this is what we call it as CH2OH. This is first carbon atom that is anomaly carbon atom is beta, you know. OH should be written above the plane. This is H and this is H. They are cis to each other. And here it is OH. Here it is OH. They are also cis to each other. This is H and this is H. This is what we call it as beta D ribose. This is a pentose sugar present in, yes, it is the nucleic acid known as RNA. RNA contains beta D ribose. This is one of the, yes, it is, uh, uh, yes, it is uh, uh, the sugars present in nucleic acids. Apart from that, you know, we have one more type of, yes, it is uh, pentose sugar that is responsible for, yes, it is formation of nucleic acids. It will be, yes, it is uh, beta D2 deoxyribose. The second, yes, it is the sugar, a pentose sugar involved in the formation of nucleic acids will be beta D2, yes, it is uh, deoxy, yes, it is uh, a ribose. This particular sugar is present in DNA there. This particular sugar is present in DNA. Let's observe. I can make use of this structure. In order to write, yes, it is beta D. Yes, it is beta D2 deoxyribose. Look at this. This is position number 1. This is position number 2. This is 3. This is 4 and this is 5. Oh, the? Here it is. In the second position, we have OH group. Oh, the? But here, in the case of, yes, it is beta D2 deoxyribose. One oxygen is removed and you write H here and of course H. Remaining will be the same. Really, second portion will OH there. Really, second portion, the first portion, the second portion, third portion, fourth portion. Of course, this is CH2OH. Other, this is fifth portion. Really, second portion will OH there. Really, very H there. That is deoxy. One oxygen is removed from this. Then you are going to get beta D2. Second portion will one oxygen removed. Beta D2 deoxy reverse. Remaining same, this is OH, this is H, H and of course uh, this is OH because beta is in the OH is above the plane and this is what we call it as, yes it is beta D2 deoxy ribose. The another pentose sugar present in, yes it is nucleic acids. As I said, this beta D2 deoxy ribose is present in DNA, this beta D ribose is present in RNA. Now these are the, yes it is, uh, uh, two pentose sugars. And uh, that will be, yes, it is produced when nucleic acids undergo, yes, it is complete hydrolysis. So that is, as far as uh, the second type of, uh, yes, it is uh, component present in, yes, it is uh, nucleic acids will be, yes, it is uh, heterocyclic nitrogenous bases, heterocyclic nitrogenous bases. There are two types of uh, heterocyclic nitrogenous bases involved in the formation of nucleic acids and that is one it will be, yes it is uh, urine bases and the second it will be, yes it is uh, pyrimidine bases, yes it is, there are two types of nitrogenous bases present in nucleic acids, it will be purine bases and pyrimidine bases, under purine bases you know we have, yes it is uh, adenine and of course guanine. These are the two purine bases which will be present in nucleic acids and of course as far as pyrimidine bases are concerned we have uh, yes it is uh, thymine yes then it is uh, the cytosine yes then it is uracil. Oh, these are the three pyrimidine bases which will be involved in the formation of nucleic acids. As far as DNA is concerned, yes, DNA is, uh, yes it is, uh, DNA consists of, yes, that is uh, DNA, the nucleic acid DNA consists of, yes it is uh, adenine, yes it is guanine and of course cytosine and then it is thiamine, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thiamine, these are the four nitrogenous bases present in DNA and as far as uh, RNA is concerned, RNA consists of adenine, Guanine, cytosine, and of course uracil. Of course, uh, adenine is abbreviated as A, guanine as a G, thiamine as a T, cytosine as a C, and of course uracil as U. This is what we call it as. Uh, yes, it is abbreviations that we use in order to represent nitrogenous bases. 
two types of nitrogenous bases we find we come across in nucleic acids as it is purine bases and, and of course pyruvine bases purine bases involve adenine and guanine pyruvine bases of thymine cytosine and uracil spelling note right t h y m i n e ne barebeku yenadru t h y a baradre that use different meaning adikoskara t h y m i n e thymine cytosine and uracil so this is what we call it as yes it is uh, that is what we call it as heterocyclic nitrogenous bases dna consists of adenine guanine cytosine and thymine RNA consists of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Just observe between these two, you know that is the, the nitrogenous base present only in RNA is uracil. Nitrogenous base present only in DNA is thymine. Now the the nitrogenous base present only in DNA is thymine. The nitrogenous base present only in RNA is uracil. The nitrogenous base is present in DNA as well as RNA it will be adenine or guanine or cytosine. Now the ಈ ಮೂರು ನೈಟ್ರೋಜನಸ್ ಬೇಸಸ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಎರಡರಲ್ಲೂ ಇದು ಬರೀ ಡಿ ಎನ್ ಎದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಇದು ಬರೀ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಗಮನಿಸಿ ಓಕೆನಾ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಫರ್ ಆಸ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾಸ್ಫರಿಕ್ ಆಸಿಡ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಹೌದಾ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾಸ್ಫರಿಕ್ ಆಸಿಡ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಫಾಸ್ಫರಿಕ್ ಆಸಿಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪಿ ಓ ಫೋರ್ ಹೌದಾ ದಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ this is what we call it as this is oh this is oh and of course this is why this is what we call it as phosphoric acid and of course this is tribasic acid there are three replaceable hydrogen atoms okay now so this is what we call it as phosphoric acid unit presenting yes it is nucleic acids now at this moment we'll take up yes it is uh, the next discussion that is uh, the structure of yes it is nucleic acids right now let us see structure of nucleic acids okay na and for that purpose you know let me take up yes it is uh, the pentose sugar yes so already i already i already written that structure of yes it is pentose sugar yes here it is uh, oh group is above the plane here it is oh group this is oh h h and of course this is ch2 oh oh na this is h and of course this is h this is pentose sugar present in yes it is already there this is position number 1 this is position number 2 this is position number 3 this is 4 and it will be 5 now the one just observe yes it is uh, if uh, yes it is uh, this particular pentose sugar is attached with this particular pentose sugar is attached with base nitrogenous base at yes it is first position then you are going to get yes it is a type of a unit we call it as yes it is nucleoside nucleoside refers to the the unit formed when base is attached to the one dash position of yes it is pentose sugar i represented you know the position as 1 2 3 4 5 for uh, yes it is a uh, uh, pentose sugar once that base is attached to the yes it is once that base is attached to the sugar the position will be changed as 1 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash and 5 dash these are the positions of the carbon atoms and of course in yes it is nucleoside that is nucleoside is formed when pentose sugar is attached with the base that is nucleoside is made up of sugar and base when base is attached to the 1 dash position of the pentose sugar you are going to get one unit what we call it as nucleoside a unit in yes it is nucleic acids this is what we call it as yes it is uh, the nucleoside look at this uh, as i said you know nucleic acid is also made up of what we call it as yes it is uh, phosphoric acid unit you know the nucleic acid is also made up of yes it is phosphoric acid look here if uh, phosphoric acid unit is attached to the yes if phosphoric acid is attached to the yes it is uh, the pentose sugar the phosphoric acid is attached to the yes it is pentose sugar at 5 dash position yes at 5 dash position no if phosphoric acid is attached to the yes it is 5 dash position of the nucleoside if phosphoric acid is attached to the 5 dash position of the nucleoside then you are going to get uh, one more type of uh, a substance that is a chemical compound what we call it as yes it is uh, nucleotide what we call it as nucleotide nucleotide is made up of yes it is sugar 
and of course a base and of course plus yes it is phosphoric acid unit phosphoric acid unit yes look at this let me connect yes it is phosphoric acid unit to the phi dash portion of the nucleoside just observe OH group of phosphoric acid OH group of alcohol undergo interaction they lose water molecule and thereby you are going to get one ester linkage yes it is look at this this is the ester linkage formed between phosphoric acid and yes it is the phi dash portion of the yes it is the nucleoside and of course this results in what we call it as nucleotide this results in nucleotide what I said you know nucleic acids are polymers of yes it is nucleotides or you can say nucleotides are repeating structural units made up of pentose sugar nitrogenous base and phosphoric acid unit this is what we call it as nucleotide as I said uh, nucleic acids are formed by repeated combination of yes it is uh, nucleotides in the case of nucleic acids these nucleotides are linked through phosphodiester linkages at uh, 5 dash and 3 dash positions of pentose sugar look at this uh, that is in nucleic acids these nucleotides are linked through yes it is phosphodiester linkages other between yes it is 3 dash and of course between 5 dash and 3 dash carbon atoms of yes it is uh, pentose sugars of yes it is nucleotides look at this this is 3 dash version this is 5 dash version they already one yes it is uh, phosphoric acid is connected to nucleoside at 5 dash version now at this moment this particular OH group at the 3 dash version also forms yes it is uh, the ester linkage with another yes it is nucleotide let me write uh, yes it is uh, one more yes it is nucleotide let me write one more nucleotide because you know in nucleic acids nucleic acids are produced by yes it is combination of large number of nucleotide units so this is what we call it as uh, base it is right this is 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash and of course this is a CS2 CS2 is attached to phosphoric acid link phosphoric acid group oh, no, this is P and this is OH this is double bond and of course this is OH this is what we call it as uh, one more nucleotide and here it is H and this will be OH this will be OH this is H H and of course H this is look at this this is uh, that is 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash and yes it is 5 dash. This is the nucleotide in the nucleotide. Look at this. What I said, these nucleotides in nucleic acids are linked through phosphodiester linkages at 3 dash and 5 dash versions of yes it is pentose sugar. Look at this. A linkage takes place like this. A molecule of water is removed here. The molecule of water is removed here. Look at this. It will be yes, it is. This is one ester linkage. This is another ester linkage. Phosphodiester linkage. This phosphoric acid is forming two ester linkages with yes, it is uh, the sugar, I mean pentose sugar there. This is what we call it as phosphodiester linkage. This is 3 dash portion, this is 5 dash portion. And of course, once again, this particular OH group will be involved in yes, it is uh, phosphodiester linkage with another nucleotide. And this particular, yes, it is uh, phosphoric acid also involves in the formation of phosphodiester linkage with one more, yes, it is uh, nucleotide. Agagi, this is what we call it as 5 dash, five dash end of the kadre. This will be 3 dash end. This is 5 dash end and it will be 3 dash end. And of course, actually, on the basis of this, uh, what I can conclude at this moment, you know, look here. And of course, like that, you know, large number of nucleotide molecules should undergo in combination. You you know, sometimes, you know, these OH groups undergo ionization to Q. Yes, it is O minus here. E OH group ionization I put to O minus and the very both in Tondraila. Okay, now. So, this is what we call it as polynuclear. And here, I have represented only two nucleotide units. That's why it is dinucleotide and the Karibodo. Again, you continue, Madre. You are going to get polynucleotide and it will be nucleic acid work to that. Just observe this particular, yes it is uh, nucleic acid. This particular nucleic acid is characterized by sugar phosphate, yes it is. 
backbone. Other this particular nutric acid is correct as required. Sugar phosphate, yes, yeah, it is uh, backbone. Other and this is what we call it as uh, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate backbone, in which uh, bases are attached to. Yes, it is in which bases are attached to. Yes, it is uh, sugar units. Other in which bases are attached to sugar units. Hagagi. The repeating unit in yes it is what we call it as uh, the nucleotide will be this one base attached to sugar and phosphate this is repeating unit and of course this is simplest solution for the representation of yes it is nucleic acids and of course uh, this refers to the yes it is uh, primary structure of nucleic acid this refers to the primary structure of yes it is nucleic acid as far as uh, primary structure of nucleic acid is concerned primary structure of nucleic acid refers to the Yes, it is uh, <clears throat> sequence of uh, four nitrogenous bases attached to the sugar phosphate backbone in nucleic acid chain. Uh, that is primary structure of nucleic acid refers to the sequence of four nitrogenous bases. Sequence of four nitrogenous bases. This is B1, this is B2, this is B3, and like this B4, B5, like that. That is primary structure of nucleic acid refers to the sequence of four nitrogenous bases attached to the sugar phosphate backbone of the nucleic acid chain so that is what we call it as uh, the primary structure of yes it is uh, nucleic acids of course uh, as far as uh, the secondary structure of nucleic acid is concerned and the secondary structure of dna you know we have two types of nucleic acids you know the secondary structure of dna was given by yes it is uh, watson and crick you know you, it will be uh, popularly known as Watson, Watson Crick model of yes, it is DNA. According to Watson and Crick, according to Watson and yes, it is Crick. Watson and Crick proposed yes, it is double standard. Yes, it is Watson and Crick proposed double standard. Yes, it is double standard alpha helix structure. Alpha helix structure to the yes, it is. DNA. That means DNA is characterized by two strands of nucleic acids. DNA is characterized by two strands of nucleic acids which will be run in opposite directions. Which will be run in opposite directions. Let, let, let me represent that particular schematic picture of DNA molecule. Yes. Look at this. This is one strand. Yes. If I say this is 5 dash end of the nucleic acid, it will be 3 dash end. Oh, the, look at the another strand. It will be run in opposite direction. Yes. Look at this. This is you know, 3 dash and other. Then I get the 5 dash and other. This is 5 dash and, and of course it will be 3 dash and other. This is 1 strand, 2 strands are running in opposite direction. You know, 5, 5 dash to 3 dash run. This will be running in. Yes, it is 5 dash to 3 dash. This will be from 3 dash to. Yes, it is 5 dash. Hagagi. 2 strands in DNA molecule are running in, run in opposite direction. Of course, uh, these two strands, these two strands in DNA molecule, they are held together by hydrogen bonds. They are held together by hydrogen bonds between specific, uh, yes it is base pairs. Hydrogen bonds are taking place between specific base pairs. So for example, if I say this particular nucleic acid, if it is, uh, yes it is adenine, if it is guanine, if it is thiamine, if it is cytosine, etc. These are the nitrogenous bases. Adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with thiamine of the another strand. Guanine forms three hydrogen bonds with cytosine of the another strand. Thiamine forms two hydrogen bonds with adenine of another strand. Cytosine forms three hydrogen bonds with guanine of another strand. Like this, you know, base pairing takes place between adenine and yes, it is thiamine. Look at this. Adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with thiamine. Go on in forms three hydrogen bonds with cytosine. That is, these two strands are complementary to each other. That means you know the sequence of nitrogenous bases in one strand. You can determine the sequence of nitrogenous bases in the another strand. Say for example, if it is A, if it is C, D, G, A, this is the sequence of bases in one strand. And therefore, the sequence of bases in the second strand should be look at this. A pairs with the thiamine, C pairs with guanine, T pairs with adenine. 
G pairs with cytosine, A pairs with thiamine, like this, you know. The, the sequence of nitrogenous bases in two strands will be complementary to each other. So this is what we call it as, uh, yes it is uh, the secondary structure of DNA molecule. As far as RNA is concerned, RNA is characterized by single strand. It is characterized by single strand of nucleic acids. As I said, RNA is characterized by, yes it is ribose sugar, the, and the nitrogenous bases like adenine, guanine, cytosine, and of course uracil. So these are the four nitrogenous bases present in RNA. There are three types of RNA molecules. This one it is uh, mRNA, that is messenger RNA, R RNA, that is ribosomal RNA, T RNA, that is transfer RNA. Like this, you know, we have three types of RNA molecules. So this is something about, yes, it is structural aspects of, yes, it is uh, nucleic acids. And especially we discussed what we call it as uh, DNA there. Agudala, not this moment, you know. We'll come to the the last topic of the chapter. It will be yes, it is uh, biological importance of yes, it is nucleic acids. As I said, you know, as far as uh, DNA is concerned, DNA forms chemical basis for yes, it is heredity. DNA forms chemical basis for heredity there, or you can say DNA is considered to be yes, it is reserve of genetic information. It is responsible for the transformation of inherent characters from one generation to the another generation. That is one biological importance of DNA. Apart from that, you know, this DNA, it is capable of undergoing self-duplication during cell division. So that, you know, it can transfer, yes, it is uh, the identical DNA strands to its daughter cells. That is, DNA is capable of undergoing self-duplication during cell division. So that... Uh, it can transfer identical strands to its daughter cells. So that is what we call it as the one more importance of, yes, it is uh, DNA there or nucleic acids there. Apart from that, you know, uh, these nucleic acids are playing vital role in protein synthesis. You know that uh, actually RNA molecules are responsible for the synthesis of proteins, but the message for the synthesis of particular type of protein is present in DNA. That means DNA directs RNA molecules to synthesize a particular type of protein and thereby, you know, particular sequence of amino acids will be available for synthesis of particular type of protein. So this is what we call it as uh, the biological importance of, yes, it is uh, nucleic acids there. So that's all about, yes, it is nucleic acids and that completes the discussion, yes, it is biomolecules. In the next video, we'll see one more chapter that is electrochemistry. Thank you very much, right?